So today let's analyze this USB charger which failed. It was donated by a viewer from Slovakia, so big thanks for the donation and now let's try to see what failed in it and maybe let's fix it. It's not worth it, but for education of course. Let's take a look at the marking. It's Lenovo output 5 volts, 2 amps, 10 watts. Let's try to test it to see if it does anything. And it's completely dead. So let's open it. And he probably already tried to open it, so and I hope I didn't. Whatever. Let's try to open it and it opens easily because he already opened it and I have to stress that good quality chargers normally don't open that easy because they have to be safe and not open by accident. Like the crappy Chinese ones. Can I pull this out? Plastic cover on it and the board. It looks like a good quality charger. It has some interference inductor, some safety, I guess. So that's why one capacitor between the primary and secondary side. A polymer capacitor on the secondary side. It seems a good quality. Some fusible resistor. A transformer. Some plastic shields for better isolation so the primary and secondary sides can't come into contact. This comes out and here's the bridge rectifier after the fuse. The two smoothing capacitors on the primary side, the inductor for interference suppression, a differential mode interference suppression between the capacitors, and I guess a switching chip, no discrete transistor. The high voltage switching transistor is inside of the chip. The isolation distance isn't very large, but it's still safe because this plastic actually slides into the slot. So it's isolated nicely. Here's a huge gap this safety capacitor between the primary and the secondary side. And this switching chip basically switches the primary of the transformer. I guess some auxiliary winding is rectified and produces a low voltage for the chip after the startup. Some sniper networks, voltage sensing resistors. One of the diodes is rectifying the auxiliary and the other one is the part of the sniper network. Some current sensing resistors, low resistance. I guess they are in parallel just to get it to the right value. This is a tiny inductor. I guess also between the capacitors and on the secondary side I can probably see a synchronous rectifier instead of a diode which gives it more efficiency and there is no communication chip because it's just 5 volts. Some loading resistor and a discharging resistor for this capacitor and that's about it. And the transformer has the secondary with a safety insulation on it and going from the transformer further here so the insulation isn't actually removed from the winding closer to the other windings. So that's the visual inspection. It looks like a good quality, but it failed anyway, and I don't see any visible damage, nothing burned or any solder joint cracked or broken. Well, maybe take a closer look before saying something. This solder joint on the transformer secondary pin actually looks cracked. And this definitely could be what makes it not work. But this would be quite a quick repair, wouldn't it? So let's check other components to be sure. So you can learn something actually. The fusible resistor is about 4.4 ohms. This is fine. These tend to be from about 1 ohm to about a couple tens of ohms. There are the current sensing resistors. They are two in a parallel, close to 2 ohms. So the parallel combination is about 1 ohm. This is completely fine. Some startup resistors powering the chip before the auxiliary generates the voltage for the chip. And this measurement is skewed by some capacitor charging in the circuit. And of course I checked the primary electrolytic capacitors are discharged before this. And they see 3 mega ohms but it's skewed by other components in the circuit. 120 ohms is right. 430 kilo ohms. There is some loading and discharging resistor on the secondary side. And this measurement also checks for the short in the secondary smoothing capacitor here. Which is not shorted apparently. Some snapper network resistor. 30 ohms. All the resistances seem right here. Now let's switch it to diodes. Checking the bridge rectifier. One AC terminal to the positive, the other AC terminal to the positive. Now from the negative to one AC terminal and to the other AC terminal. Nice voltage drops of diodes. Now one of the diodes and the other one. One is the snubber network, the other one is the auxiliary winding rectification. And here's some, I guess, synchronous rectifier. Not sure how the pins are in it, but at least I guess you can see the anti-parallel diode of its internal MOSFET. So this is not shorted. There is also a broken solder joint on the USB connector, which itself wouldn't be a problem, but some designers are actually using the metal housing of the connector 
as a jumper. It has two pins and there is no other connection in some designers between these two pins than this metal shell. So if one is broken it might actually break some connection in the circuit. And it seems to be the case. This metal is actually used as a jumper between two points in the circuit. Ring testing the primary of the transformer just to boast of my DIY ring tester. Well, I guess this is the auxiliary actually. This is the actual primary. 15 rings. A good flyback transformer, I guess. And of course I can't make a charger video without looking at the marking of this capacitor between the primary and secondary side. Measuring the ESR of the secondary capacitor. It's a polymer capacitor and if it's good, most of the reading is actually going to be the resistance or impedance of the cables. It seems good. I guess just a couple tens of milliohms at most. 820 micro 6.3 volts. Now let's go to the 10 micro 400 volt capacitors on the primary side. The first one is about 1 ohm, which is fine for a low capacitance capacitor. And the other one is going to be, this one shows 1 1.4 ohms, which is still acceptable. The lower the capacitance, the higher is the typical ESR. And there is a table on this meter, which of course for some reason doesn't go up to 400 volts, which is annoying. But if you like super short videos, go to TikTok. Let's take a soldering gun, rosin and a kilogram of leaded solder. And let's fix the joints. A bucket of rosin, some solder, fixing the joint of the connector. And fixing the joint of the secondary. I mean, the other one is actually the worst one. It's horribly fixed and let's test it. And if something's exploding, let's see it exploding. So let's test it using my dodgy plug instead of putting it in the housing and turning it on. And it seems to be running 5 volts. Let's load it using my test load. And of course it doesn't fit into the view because I chose my smallest tripod. Let's increase the load. 0.3 amps. 1 amp. It should go up to 2 amps. Nice! The voltage actually goes a little bit up with the load, but it might be some sort of a cable resistance compensation. Otherwise it seems to work nicely. Now testing it in the box so it actually runs at its typical operating temperature. After three hours, no explosion and let's open it quickly and take a look at it using a thermal camera. Here is the top of the board. The transformer. The electrolytic capacitor is actually not very hot. And the other side of it. And of course let's oscilloscope it. Now it's at full load. And it's a flyback in a discontinuous conduction mode. Here the transistor is on. Here the diode. Or actually a synchronous rectifier is conducting. And here nothing. It's just ringing. That's a full load and reducing the load. And it actually reduces the frequency, seems to be constant on a time, unless you get to a very light load. Let's zoom it out and reduce the load. And increase the load again. And of course the waveform seems sort of upside down because the synchronous rectifier is in the negative rail. So the transistor on actually appears as a positive polarity. The synchronous rectifier conduction is negative. And the marking of the primary chip and the secondary chip the synchronous rectifier. And its datasheet shows an example schematic but in this charger the primary chip has the high voltage switching transistor built in. So that's this power supply fixed whether it made any sense to fix it or not. But at least for education, the experiences from the small power supplies can always apply to the big ones. So that's it and if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. Because this sort of a channel couldn't exist without it.